Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another edition of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Mefford. And I'm Kathy Groover. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about life. Now, it's a very deep subject, but we're going to talk about life in the, uh, in the realm of what happens when things start to go awry when things start to fall apart. We have all had experiences where life pulls us away from work. And we talk about this work life balance, but what happens when the scales are tipped and things get really out of whack? Um, 2010 was that year for me, total mess. It started with uh, my husband's computer crashing and him losing an entire manuscript that was due in two weeks. We had to foreclose on a property. We got audited by the IRS. Both cats died. And the year culminated with me getting hit by a car in a crosswalk on December 21st. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good year. <laughs> it's not a good year. 2010. Wah. No. So, uh, uh, and, and, but it all came in one year, so it was done. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do you, you know, when things like that happen, especially consistently and things tend to snowball, how do you handle work? How do you handle that balance? So, and I know, Jason, you've been having some, it's yeah. been a chaotic year for you as well. So dive into that and let's see what we can solve. Yeah. So that's, so that's why, I mean, it, as we were talking about this, I, I, th- I think, you know, again, and I'm getting old enough now that I've seen some of the cycles up and down, you know, like you talk about 2010. I mean, I've had bad years like that in the past. This year is kind of one of those, right? Where um, there's been several deaths in my family, um, some major medical issues, um, having to move, you know, and, and all of those things that end up kind of taking me away um, from my business, right? Because I mean, when, when, when these things happen, um, you know, ultimately it's about, you know, doing the right thing. And, and when a family member dies, you need to be there, right? Um, but when you're there, it also means that, that sometimes, you, you know, it takes you away from what you're actually doing. And, and often, you know, again, what I've found too is that, that sometimes it's, um, it takes a lot of your mental energy, right? And, and so what, one of the things that I've, I've learned in studying psychology is our mind wanders. And they've, they've actually done some studies on this. And ironically, it's not exactly 50%, it's 47%. But about 50% of the time, your mind is wandering and thinking about something else. And so, you know, when we're going through these struggles and, you know, you're sitting in front of your computer and you're trying to work on writing your book or you're trying to work on, you know, copy for your website or whatever it happens to be that you're doing and and you're supposed to be focused on this, but your mind wanders back, right, to to whatever is, is going on in your life. And so, you know, I know Kathy, you've, you've done some work around this as well. So yeah, maybe let's talk through what do you, what do you do when it feels like you just kind of keep getting pulled? It's one of those years or one of those, you know, groups of months and, you know, how can we kind of get back to doing what we need to do and get out of the trap of spiraling down? Right. Because a lot of times when those, when those feelings come in and we, and we have that wandering of our mind, um, we, we tend to start spiraling down and think, oh my gosh, you know, this is horrible. I'm never going to get out of this. Woe is me, you know, kind of thing. And that can lead people actually falling into depression um, as well, which is, you know, a huge, huge, it's a, it's a huge issue in this country um, as well. So I think it's, it's one of those elephants in the room that I want to talk about because I know you and I aren't the only ones that go through times like this in our life. Yeah. Well, man, there's so many things that are running through my head. The first of it is, you're right, you do have to go deal with those personal things. If you have a death in the family, if you, my father had a heart attack this year. So I had to fly back to Pittsburgh a couple times to make sure he was okay. And the downside is my dad's 3,000 miles away. I'm in California. He's back east. It's not like I can pop on the freeway and suddenly I'm at my my parents. Um, but what's interesting is I have built a relationship and a rapport with my clients and because I still have my massage practice where they know me well and I, I don't slough off. Mm-hmm. I don't willy nilly take time off. I, I don't show up late. I don't. I have a work ethic that they understand to be really strong and really serious. So when I text them and say, my father had a heart attack, I have to go. No one was like, oh, there she goes again. You know, I mean, they went. <laughs> 
Of course you have to go. Why don't you cancel me? Why don't I pay you anyway? What? No one said that. But it's oh. like, you know, I mean, it was, I was like, that's a perfect business, right? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I'll pay you anyway. No, I haven't figured that one out. Um, but it's like, especially as a self-employed person, you know, I don't get sick days. I don't get personal time off. I don't get vacation time. If I have to pick up and go back to Pittsburgh, that's money out of my pocket. So that's one of those other stressors that come. This is why, and when we do our episode on finances, you want to make sure you have a cushion. (laughs) I don't want to get into finances now, but you want to make sure that if you can't work for a week, two weeks, six weeks, that you have money and resources set aside that you can do that. So luckily I did. So missing a couple days of clients was not financially a problem, but it was that time away. And, you know, I'm sitting in the hospital room working on speaking proposals and I'm sitting in the hospital room answering emails and, um, my folks know that I run my own business. And so they, again, they have an understanding of, well, Kathy does have to work, but I think you have to be open in communicating with that. And I was actually having a conversation with a friend yesterday and he said his wife's chief complaint is he works too much. He's I've an never, attorney. I've never heard uh, that. No, no, no. <laughs> no of cor- and he's an attorney. Of course he works too much. And he said, but he's gotten really good at saying, look, I just need 20 minutes for emails. I'm going to close the door. If I see it's going to take longer, I'll let you know, but just give me that time. And my husband and I do that. It's like, Hey, do you want to regroup at 8 PM? And then we'll watch TV. Or, um, so I think that open communication and setting those boundaries because, you know, I mean, I literally could sit down right now in front of the computer and not stop for three days straight with all the stuff that I feel like I have to do. So it's that priority. Do you need to answer every single email in the middle of the funeral or can you just glance at one, you know, and setting that time aside? Um, Because you do, especially as a self-employed person, you do have to get the work done Mm -hmm. without driving yourself crazy. Now to your, yeah. I I was going to say, because as you were talking about that, I mean, it's, it's interesting how a lot of this stuff kind of really like comes back together. I mean, one of the productivity tips too, uh, you know, is carving out time like that. So, you know, again, maybe you carve out 20 minutes or a half an hour, maybe it's an hour and you say, I only have this amount of time. And so while you're there, you know, this kind of goes back to mindfulness in that half hour, in that hour, all I'm going to worry about is what I have to do right now. And that might be work. And so for an hour, you know, again, you, you, you tell your family, you tell your friends, look, I need an hour and it's only going to be an hour but I'm going to be completely focused for that hour so that I can come back for the next five hours and be completely focused on what I need to deal with, with you. And here's the pushback I get on that. Well, I feel bad. They need me here. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. But what they need is you here. Mm -hmm. They don't need your empty shell of a body there while your mind is answering emails, while your mind is going, I don't want to be sitting here with Aunt May. I really need to be doing this work. You know, and I think one of the things we do is we forget that we're not kids and we're not in timeout and that we can actually get up and move. Uh, (laughs) We actually can say, you know what? I am so sorry. I have to go do this thing and then I can be back with you here fully. If you and I are in the middle of a conversation and I suddenly turn to you and go, oh my God, I'm sorry. If I don't go to the bathroom, I got to go right now. You're not going to be like, oh, okay. I mean, you're going to be, you know, it's I'm going to be like, like, go ahead and pee your pants, right? <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> no, I you're wouldn't. Mean. Be that. That's mean. <laughs> anyway. Um, but, but we will excuse ourselves for biology breaks. So I think people will understand if you say, you know what, I, I'm so sorry, I can't be completely with you right now because this thing happened this morning and I can't get it out of my head and I just need to go deal with, give me five minutes and I will come right back to that conversation or right back to that thing. Now, please don't stand up in the middle of the memorial service and say, hey, I'll be right back, I got a call. You know, I mean, that's probably, it's not going to go work. very that well. Didn't, that didn't work. No, um, yeah, but I mean, use your head people. Uh, but we can do that. We are allowed to step out of a situation. And when I teach my communication stuff, that's one of the things I say, you know, you want to be present and mindful with that person. And if something is pulling you someplace else that you can deal with, go deal with that. And then it's prioritizing. Okay. So you have an hour to do emails. Maybe all you can get done is I'm so sorry. I had a death in the family. I'll get back to you tomorrow. Maybe you have to send that out five times so that you can not 
if you don't have the brain power, if you're so distracted, because I know when my dad was in the hospital, we weren't sure if he was going to make it. My brain was not good at, oh, I'm going to craft a really good speaking proposal right now. I couldn't do it. I know I missed deadlines and I missed submitting myself for things because I just couldn't do it. And that's okay too. Well, yeah, I think it's because as you were talking, it, it kind of brought up, you know, two, two thoughts for me is, is, you know, like you said there at the end, and we, we have to be self-compassionate, right? Because, I mean, that was a, a book that I read this last year that actually had a big impact on me because I'm, I'm really a perfectionist, right? I, I want to always hit the deadlines. I want to always have everything done. And, you know, sometimes we can't do that. And we have to be as kind to ourselves when we go through those things and we miss those deadlines as we are with somebody else. Right. Because like you said, I mean, if, if there's a biological break that you need to take, of course, you know, you're going to say, you know, the other person's going to say, well, of course, go and do that. Right. Because we would be kind to that person. But when we are the one that needs the biological break, we think, oh, I can just hold it a little bit longer. I can hold it a little bit longer. I'm tough. I can do this. I don't need to do that. Right. And we need to we need to show ourselves that same self-compassion as we would other people. Um, the other, the other thing that you're talking about, and this kind of goes back to the mind wandering and other stuff as well. You know, if you're, if you're sitting there and, and you're trying to be with this other person, but there's something that is just going on in your mind over and over again, you're ruminating is what it's called. Um, and, and you just can't get that thing out, then you, you've got to make a shift. You've got to do something different. And so some of the things that I've been taught, you know, kind of from a productivity perspective is, well, if you think about it, either do it or write it down. So if it's something that you can get up and do right away, like, okay, I need to go take care of this. I'll be back in five minutes. Do it now. If not, say just a minute, I just need to write something down real quick and then I can be back and be present with you. Um, Because actually either taking care of it or writing it down, what it does is it allows your brain to just release it, right? Because your, your brain, especially when you're trying to remember something and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to remember to take the trash out. I got to take the trash out. I got to take the trash out or else I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, um, if, if you write yourself a sticky note and put it in a place where you know, uh, now you can let that go. Your brain can let that go and go, okay, I have now developed a reminder for myself I know to take the trash out. I no longer have to use that processing, you know, space in my brain uh, for that. And so it clears out that RAM cache, if we want to get, you know, talking like computers, so we can then focus on something else. Yeah, absolutely. And I recommend that to people too. If they can't sleep, they wake up in the middle of the night and they start ruminating and, you know, ruminants are cows. They chew on stuff. That's where rumination comes from. And we get a lot of, stuff done from that rumination. We come up with ideas, we solve problems. And that's great unless you're supposed to be comforting the widow right now and you're still thinking about bit and you're ruminating on something else. Um, What did, what did we anal retentive people do before sticky notes? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I mean, they're just the greatest invention for, for control freak anal retentive people. Anyway, we'll have a whole, we'll have a whole thing on sticky notes. Um, Yes. And so much of this also does go back to, and this comes up in every one of our episodes, is that mindfulness and that staying present. <clears throat> because we identify with these thought forms, and those thought forms are someplace else. And um, I had a really dear friend of mine, his mother passed away. And I said, can I do anything for you? Because I seriously would do anything for this friend. Mm-hmm. And he said, can you come to the funeral? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not good at funerals. I'm very emotional and very empathetic. So I could show up to someone's funeral who I don't even know. And I will be sobbing as if they were my best friend because I just, I feel all of that. So those types of environments tend to be really uncomfortable for me, but they said, I want you there. And I said, yes. So I show up and it's an open casket, which I have not seen since my mother's funeral. And I kind of went, Oh no. And then I started thinking, because my dad was still in the hospital. So I had this past thing of, oh my God, this is reminding me of my mother's funeral. And this future thing of, oh shit, that's gonna, that could be my dad any day. Yeah. 
So I was pulled in this past and this future and I could smell the incense and everybody was crying. And I texted my husband. I went, oh my God, I, I don't think I can stay here. Like I was seriously starting to spiral. <clears throat> Sorry. And then I realized, wait, this isn't my mother. <laughs> this isn't my father. This is this moment of a celebration of this woman's life. And as I started doing the med meditation that I recommend everyone, which is the I am at peace and reminding myself to just be here in this moment with these people and that person, my mother's funeral drifted away. The, the future what ifs of my father fu drifted away. And I was able to be just right there with those people. And yeah, I shed some tears when I saw her kids holding each other and crying because I mean, I just would, yeah. but it didn't personalize it. It didn't, take me to that level of crazy making in my own head because I had the ability to stay present in this reality and not follow those thought forms into these past and this future. And it was such an interesting, I don't want to say experiment because that makes it sound kind of clinical, but I was able to do it. And I thought, oh my God, if I can do that in this moment of sadness, in this moment of where my brain could have taken me anywhere, then we can train, anybody can train themselves to do that. So it was, it was a really um, kind of an interesting win for me in that way because I didn't follow those thoughts. Well, yeah, and I think it's, that's a great example of, <clears throat> you know, like making a shift when those things happen because, uh -huh. you know, whether it's, it's, it's stopping, you know, you couldn't get up in the middle of the service and do stuff, but you could say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go through that little silent meditation, uh, you know, with myself right now, I'm, I'm gonna kind of change what I'm doing, try to get those feelings out of my head. And, and just in those brief few seconds, you're able to do that. You know, and, and part of this is it's, it's the way that our brain is actually wired as well, right? And, and so we have to move, you know, from the critter brain to the logical brain. Um, and that's, that's, again, kind of what, what you experienced there was, you know, all this, you know, rem remembering about your mother, the, p the potential future about your father. And it's like, whoa, just a minute. When we stop and logically think about this, that's not what's happening. But you have to take that pause, right, for your, for your logical brain to kick in and for you to say, hold it. This isn't my funeral, <laughs> right? It's not, my, right? it's not my mother's. It's not my father's. I'm here to support my friend. And, you know, whether you do that in, in kind of a silent meditation or mantra that you might say to yourself, um, you know, for me, what works a lot, you know, sometimes I need to just get up and walk around or, you know, I have, I have crazy things on my desk, like a Rubik's cube, right? So I just start playing with the Rubik's cube for a few minutes, or I get up and I go pick up my guitar and play through a song yeah. and then come and sit back down. It's, you need to have something prepared you know, for, for when you get into those situations and there's lots of different things you can do for each person, they're going to prefer something else, but you need to be prepared when you start to feel that. Yeah. Because if not, like you said, you were, you were starting to spiral down and, and you could see, you know, again, where, where that could have led you, but instead you're unlocking your potential and saying, you know what, I'm not going to go down that route. Uh, I'm going to make a shift and, and I'm going to do something different uh, because I want to be present. I want to be here for the reason that I'm here. Right. And you don't want to lose your mind. I yeah. mean, we can, I mean, seriously, I mean, I could have sat in that funeral and been a miserable, crazy person. Um, but see, there's also the first step in this. And I just realized as you were talking about that, and then I want to talk about your Rubik's cube um, is awareness. Mm -hmm. And so often, you know, years back, I might have showed up to that funeral and just gone, I can't do this. I'm just, uh, and not realizing that I was attaching this past and this future. So taking that pause and saying, why do I feel like this? Oh my God, this reminds me of my mother's funeral. Well, that was 30 years ago. Why am I bringing, why am I dragging that along with me? Let me cut that cord. Or why am I, why am I having these emotions? Why am I having these feelings? And that's the whole uh, emotional intelligence thing is what am I feeling and how is that affecting people around me? Um, we'll have a whole nother episode on emotional intelligence, but oh, we'll probably have more than one. <laughs> well, there's, yeah, that's a broad subject, but yeah. to, to your, to your thing about the Rubik's cube, when I do hypnosis with people, we set what's called an anchor. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and we typically do it by touching fingers. So we might radiate this feeling of success, of calmness, of um, tranquility, of whatever word that person wants to use. We fill their body with that so that they feel it, magnify it, magnify it, magnify it. And then we set it as an anchor. So maybe you're not working with a hypnotherapist, but if you want to remind yourself to, okay, uh, this is my calming thing. This is theoretically what those stress balls are for. Of course, we all have 700 of them from the conferences we've been to, <laughs> but maybe that's your Rubik's Cube. Maybe that is your anchor of, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to decentrate, as we've said before, uh, and just I'm just going to put everything into this Rubik's Cube for a second, and that allows you that break to then go back and be more productive. So I love the Rubik's cube. Yeah. Well, because it's like poof, you know, I mean, you, you, you focus again on whatever that anchor is mm -hmm. and every, everything else just melts away. And then, and then again, you can come back to, you know, where you're at. And, and again, that's why, I mean, we'll talk about meditation in the future, I'm sure too. Right. Because in that, and that's one of the reasons why meditation itself is so helpful because it's forcing you to anchor and come back to your breath or whatever you happen to be using is, as in, in meditation is as our mind is wandering and we start going down these other paths that we don't want to be going down. It's a way to train ourselves to come back. So again, whether that's a Rubik's cube or whatever it is, find something that's going to help you when you start to, again, like you said, become aware that Holy shit, I'm starting to go down this path you want to just stop at that point. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, that's, that's a, a great thing, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and one of the other things, you know, as you were talking to that, that has reminded me too of, of something else that I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I do and <clears throat> share with other people as well is, you know, sometimes when these things happen, it's a really big deal. You know, when, when, when somebody passes away, uh, you know, cause I, I had both my father-in-law and one of my brother-in-laws uh, within the same month that passed away. And, you know, for my father-in-law, he was 94 years old. He lived a great life. We knew this was coming. Um, it's still sad, right? But, but we knew it was coming. We were prepared. Um, we had a couple of, you know, false alarms, you know, for a while. So, mm -hmm. so we felt more prepared about it and he lived a great life. Uh, my brother-in-law was early onset Alzheimer's. He, he passed away when he was only 63. And, and so again, even though we kind of knew some of this stuff was coming, it was still rather sudden. And, and I know, especially when it's something like that, where it's, it's a big loss, you know, I'll never see my father-in-law or brother-in-law again. And again, you can go into that spiral of, of being worried about or thinking about how much you're going to miss that person, or you can again, shift it and be grateful, be grateful for all of the things that, uh, that those people taught you, um, be grateful for the better person you are as a result of that, because of, you know, the love and the kindness that maybe they shared to you. Um, and, and when you, when you focus on and, the gratitude and the appreciation that you have, um, again, things kind of melt away. And so one of the things, you know, that I like to do or share with people as well is a gratitude journal. You know, if, if, if you, if you feel like you're just kind of getting stuck and the world sucks and blah, 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 well, just again, pause, pull out a piece of paper and just start writing down some of the things that you're grateful for. Uh -huh. You know, think about those memories that you had of my, brother-in-law pushing me on the swing when I was a little kid, you know, Gary, push me, push me, push me. Right. Um, and, and think about those things instead of ruminating on those negatives because what we put into our brain, right. And what, what we're ingesting is what we end up, um, you know, seeing and feeling and experiencing as well. And, um, you know, so I thought, I think we started off talking about, you know, like getting taken away from work and other stuff, but I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it kind of, it kind of goes to the same thing because every experience we go through, we can learn from. Uh -huh. And so even when it feels like it's just horrible and nasty, and I can't believe I had to go through this, you can either focus on all those negative 
feelings that you have and this sucks. Why me? Wah, 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 rah, rah, rah. Or you can say, okay, just a minute. What am I supposed to learn about this? And, and take that, you know, whatever it is, whatever the feedback is uh, to be able to help you then kind of, kind of move forward and learn what you need to. Cause the quicker that we do that and the quicker we get through the, either those grief processes or change management, there's a little you know, cycle that we go through uh, the quicker we come out on the other side and, and the, and the better we end up becoming. And we're, again, we're unlocking our potential and becoming a better human being uh, by going, by going through those things. In fact, I mean, if you think about, I mean, just, you know, for all the listeners, if you just start thinking about great people that you admire, they all went through troubles and, and, and trials in their life. What made them great was they came through that and they're an inspiration to the rest of us because you can do this, right? You can get through this stuff. Um, and a lot of these things we've been talking about today are exactly those kinds of things that those people do as well. Right? Yeah. And the last thing that I want to say, and I think this is a good way to end this, is let's say it has been a bad year. And let's say you're not really handling it well. Um, having that awareness to say, I need help. <laughs> you know, it is, there is nothing embarrassing or humiliating or um, weakness of going to your doctor and saying, look, I've been dealing with depression or you know, I had a lot of losses this year, what can we do to help? Going to talk to a therapist, a counselor, a hypnotherapist, a, a minister, a trusted friend, maybe you need antidepressants or some sort of medical help for a couple months or forever. I mean, there's no, there's no judgment in that. There's no weakness in saying, I am not okay. And to try to power through, as I know I indeed have uh, during some stressful times, to power through isn't always the healthiest choice. And I know we want to be successful and I know that we want to um, have more doors open and we want more success and we want more accomplishments and we want more letters after our name and we want more jobs and we want, but we can't sacrifice our own physical and mental health for that. So if you're finding yourself going through a really rough patch and you realize you're not being as productive, you're not getting things done, you might want to explore the possibility that you're dealing with some low-grade depression. And that is not bad. It's just a thing that you're going through and this too shall pass. But in the meantime, you might need help. So please go ask for help from somebody if you need it. I have lost so many friends and clients to suicide um, because they didn't reach out and ask for help or they didn't get the help they needed in time. So. Oh, there's a happy note. Um, but, well, no, but I mean, I, I mean, because, because I think with that, you know, a lot of times, cause I, I'm the same way. I tend to want to power through things. And, and this is one thing that I try to share with people. And I try to remind myself of is asking for help. Doesn't mean you're weak. Mm -mm. Asking for help actually means you have courage. Okay. Cause it actually, it takes, it takes more courage to ask for help. Uh, than it does to try to power through yeah. and it, it, it gets you through quicker. And, and, and here's the other thing. And again, I mean, if, if, if listeners are, are, you know, feeling or going through some of the same things um, to realize that, you know what, we're all human and we all go through this. You know, when you look at other people in your life and, and you think, Oh, she's got her shit together. She probably doesn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. She, she's, she might be putting on some, some, you know, mask, right. To, to try to get through, cause she's trying to power through mm -hmm. because we all go through this at different times in our life and it's okay. You know, like, like you said, Kathy, this too shall pass, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 2010 closed out, didn't it? There was a new year's Eve and a new year's day in 2011. Yeah. Um, it, it does end up passing. And so, you know, reach out, get the help that you need, you know, think about some of these things that we talked about for triggering when you, when you start going down and so you can anchor yourself and, and try to really be, be present and mindful in whatever you're going through. Cause you're going to make it through it. Uh -huh. You're going to make it through. Take care of your needs, communicate with others, have that awareness of when you do need to take a break or when you do need to have a little bit of self care in there. And yeah, I mean, I, I've had so many clients where I've had this exact conversation. So this leads to us 
ultimately accomplishing more and having that life we want is this awareness because we would be lying to ourselves and all of you if we said, oh no, speed bumps are never going to happen. You're never going <laughs> to reach the barrier. You're never going to lose somebody you love. You're not, I mean, that's just, that's, that would be a lovely world in Disney, but um, it doesn't happen that way. So that's why we wanted to talk about this today. So shall we, shall we dismiss? I think we shall. Good. Now, now, uh, now is the time to move on. Now is the time to move on, so let's move on. I'm Kathy Groover, and I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next episode.